Okay, so what we're going to do is trim the, we'll start, you can start with the cup or the stem, whichever's um, the driest for you to trim. So I'm going to start first with the stem and um, we're going to trim this so that it's not so heavy and so that it's less likely to explode in the kiln with it being as thick as it is right here. So for this you will need a small loop tool, a needle tool, and then I have a large loop tool just in case I decide I want to use that, and a couple of ribs, and a sponge and a bucket of water just in case you need them nearby. Um, so we're going to start by centering this. So the first thing that I'm going to do, you can either tap it to center, which takes a little bit of practice. Um, so when you're tapping it to center on the wheel, what I'm looking for is I'm looking sort of at the periphery of the edge that I'm centering. And as it gets close to my dominant hand, for me that's my right, I give it a little tap. So you can practice this with a can filled with sand or coffee beans, um, anything like that, or just a regular can uh, will work. But if you have a coffee bean can that's a little bit wider with its center of gravity, that tends to be a good tool to practice with. Um, once you get the hang of this though, it really is the fastest way to recenter when you're trimming. Um, the other way, until you get the knack of that, to recenter a pot or any um, thing on the wheel when you're trimming is to use your needle tool to gauge where it is. So if you like, you can use the rings to assist you with this and kind of getting it close. Or um, I prefer to work on bats. So what I do is I make a really light line toward the edge of what you're trimming. So with this, I'll set it a little more off center so that you can see it a little better. So with this, you can see when I drew that I've got a really skinny line here and a really uh, fat part of that circle here. So that means that I've got more clay on this part of the circle than I do on this part. So when you're trimming it and you're trying to recenter, you want to move it in the direction that you've got less clay. So that's towards your skinnier side. You want to shift it just a little bit at a time. Let's erase that since it's going to be the wrong line. So the skinny side is that way. So I would shift it this way just a little bit. And then I would erase my line. I use my thumbnail. You can use these ribs if that's more comfortable for you. And then you draw a new line. And you do that until you've got the same distance between the line that you draw and the edge the entire way around. <music>is to lock this down to the wheel. So you're going to use some clay that's fresh out of your bag. And a good adage to remember is, if your worms are dry, your pot will fly. So you don't wanna use super dry clay to lock this down because it won't stick. You wanna use something kinda of soft and, and new. You're gonna hold down what you're trimming and then I'm pushing my thumb toward the bat.
Okay, and then you're ready to trim. So for this, I'm just trimming this part as flat as I can get it. For that, I will use my large loop tool and I'll use the flat edge here. So I'm holding this in my writing hand, my dominant hand, that's my right hand, with my finger at the neck of the tool. If I hold it way back here like this, it's going to tend to want to jump away from me. So you want to hold it in the palm of your hand, put your finger at the neck of the tool, and then that will free up your other hand to hold that tool steady. So I usually reserve kind of one hand for to hold my tool hand steady, and then I have one finger on the object that I'm trimming. I'm going to turn my wheel on slow, and the cutting edge is the underside of your tool. I'm not pushing down hard. So you're looking for your clay to be leather hard is the clay term. If you're thinking of uh, the consistency, you can think of it like a cheese. So this would be a Parmesan, a nice hard Manchego cheese, Romano something, a nice good hard Spanish cheese. If it's like brie, it's way too soft to trim and you need to let it dry out a little bit longer. And then I'm just going to catch this edge here to even that up where I pulled it off the wheel. And just a little bit under it too. what we're going to do is we're going to trim the center part out of this. So I'll draw a line so you can see. I want to leave a good amount here that will be attached to the cup above it, but I do want to trim out the center of this because it's really heavy and the fact that it is about an inch and a half thick, roughly, it will likely explode in the kiln, even if I let it dry out for a long time. So we want to reduce the chances of that so that we're not taking out anybody else's stuff. So I'm going to use my small loop tool for this. That's this tool here. And I'm holding it more like a pencil this time. So I hold it in my hand like a pencil, but again, I have my fingers close to the working edge of the tool for, for control. I start kind of with a corner and I just kind of slowly let that tool work its way down. the stem and then what we'll do next is we'll trim the cup and I'll show you how to assemble the two together. I'm going to trim the cup so I'm going to center it 
just tap it to center if you've had enough practice at that. Or you can use your needle tool trick to get it centered as well. Okay, so for this one, the best thing to do is to take the bottom of your goblet and get it as close to center as you can. So I'm going to use this line that I drew to center to kind of place this in the center. And then just make sure as I spin this that I don't need to make any adjustments. And then I'm going to draw a line and it's actually pretty close to the line I drew to center. So I know now that I don't want to trim too much beyond here so that I've got a surface to attach this to. I will round it out just a little bit, but I'm not going to go way, way in. So what we'll do is we're going to take our large loop tool and we're going to take off corners of the cup. So we're just kind of rounding this part here from here to here. So I'm just taking my tool and holding it in one spot. And then I'll slowly start moving it uh, around and down the side of the cup here. And then if you are in the habit of kind of testing your pot so that you know that you can trim a little bit more, that helps get it a little bit lighter. Um, so you can either do the tap test where you listen. So that's called tuning the pot actually. And what it, what it is is I'm listening for the lower pitch the thicker the wall, and the higher the pitch, the thinner the wall. Another thing you can do um, is what I call the ripe fruit test. So if you push gently on a pot, I'm not pushing really hard, but I'm kind of just giving it a little bit of a push like I would be if you're checking a tomato or a piece of fruit in the produce section. If it's firm, you know that the fruit is not ripe or not ready to eat and you can trim more away. If it's soft or it gives under your fingers in the littlest bit, then you know that it's probably ripe and you don't want to trim anymore because that pot is soft because the wall's thin or it's soft because your clay is too wet. So either circumstance, you don't want to trim um, you want to either stop trimming because it's too thin or you want to stop trimming because it's too wet. Um, and if it's too wet, you'll know because the clay will be sticking to itself. That can cause cracks and problems later on.
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just make another line um, with my needle tool right at the bottom where the base and the cup meet. And that is just reaffirming visually where I'm going to score. So you're going to score the bottom of this and the bottom of your cup. So when you score, you just make cross hatch marks. So you really want to scratch it up. So scoring pieces of clay together is like a clay zipper. So basically you want to make your zipper really close together and that makes for a better connection. If you make your score marks really light, your zipper is further apart and that means that there's less of a connection for the two pieces to hold hands. So I make my score marks nice and deep. And then I actually will go the other way and kind of just cross hatch those marks I just made. And then on here, we'll do the same thing. Then you can take your paintbrush and get a little bit of water. <clears throat> water will serve just fine as a slip. Um, there are a lot of theories out there about attachment slips and magic water and um, there I in the studio here we often have slips with vinegar in them the vinegar really is to keep the mold down in the clay so that it doesn't mold and smell um, but other than that that's really its main purpose um, some, po some people talk about the al alkalinity of vinegar in your slip um, and how that helps with the bond. But I have used water, just plain water, for years and it's been fine. I haven't had any issues. So water will do if you don't have access during COVID times to a particular slip. Or you can take your trimmings from the clay body that you're using and bring a container with a lid with you and you can put these in water and these make great slip as well. So there are a lot of theories out there. Pottery is often a voodoo science, I've heard it said. Um, you do what works for you and if it works and it's working, that's great. But I'm just going to use some plain water here. And then we're going to give this a little wiggle on. Make sure that it's straight. Once you get it in position, you can take the tip of your wooden knife tool and come in and clean up this edge here. And then I'm just going to take my finger, put a little water there and then use my rib to soften that up. I put a little bit of water, not a ton of water, a little bit of water goes a long way, 
on my fingers and I clean the rib up here or the rims up here from where it was sitting on the back. 